Hello guys, I'm Dr. Sajjad Pathan and today we are going to look at few single best answer questions related to the FRKM finals and the MRKM intermediate exams. Let's look at the question which I asked in the last video to begin with. This was the bonus single best answer question which I had asked in the last month video and uh, the question was 24 year old male is in the emergency department with an anaphyl axis he is not known to have any allergies has not changed to anything new he does not take any medications regularly when asked about any food intake he says he had a meat burger and chips about eight hours ago with regards to his medical history he was seen at his gp about three weeks ago after a tick bite that required no treatment then what is the most likely intervention that would be useful to treat the underlying condition? Adrenaline auto-injectors, abstinence from meat, course of doxycycline, course of steroids and antihistamines and desensitization. I got many answers but before we discuss the answer, I, I want you to have an idea about what exactly the examiner is trying to ask. He's shown that a person has come after eating meat with anaphylaxis. He's given a history about a tick bite three weeks ago which did not require any treatment. So what is the condition? Many of you must not have heard about this condition. So today I'm going to talk about this condition. The condition is called as alpha-gal syndrome. So these ticks in their saliva contain a carbohydrate called alpha-gal. So when they bite humans, the alpha-gal is transmitted into the human body and IgE is synthesized. This alpha-gal carb is also present in meat, gelofusin and cetuximab. So when humans after a tick bite have this IgE synthesized, eat meat in the future, they may land up with a type 1 hypersensitive reaction and anaphylaxis. At the current time, there is no treatment available and desensitization may work but only two cases have been reported yet so the correct answer for this question at this point of time is abstinence from meat a course of doxycycline will not help course of steroids or adrenaline antihistamine will not help desensitization plus or minus but the right answer here is abstinence from meat now let us look at some sbas for the February editions. Let's look at question number one. You are seeing a patient with the following ECG. What would you do next? Cardioword the patient, check the core temperature, check the electrolyte levels, give diltiazem, give procainamide. Take a five to 10 second pause and we'll discuss the answer after that. Okay, so if you look at the ECG very closely, I've put two red circles. It shows a J point spike, which is a, called as Osborne J waves. It is not pathognomic for hypothermia, but is commonly seen in hypothermia. It may be present in other conditions as well. So the right answer here is check the core temperature rather than checking for electrolytes or giving medications. If he's hypothermic, you can correct the hypothermia by active and passive heating method. Let's look at question number two. A five-year-old immigrant boy is in the emergency department with history of cold and cough for five days. He will have bouts of cough followed by vomiting. The mother noticed a non-blanching rash on the upper chest and face today. On head to toe examination, child has fever and evidence of rectal prolapse. What could be the cause of the patient's condition? So let's take a 10 second pause and look at the options and the, then we'll discuss the answers. Is it Bordetella pertussis, child abuse, chlamydia trachomatis, H. influenza type B, Miseria meningitis? Okay, let us discuss the question in detail. 
he's an immigrant boy with this the examiner may be trying to tell us that perhaps he's not vaccinated then he says uh, bouts of cough followed by vomiting this fits into the picture of whooping cough caused by bordetella pertussis non blanching rash could be due to either neisseria meningitidis or due to projecta uh, recurrent vomiting on head to toe examination child has fever and evidence of rectal prolapse child abuse could be a possibility over here but child abuse will not present with fever so the answer here is bordetella pertussis although the vaccines are available and somebody will be vaccinated and they will feel uh, uh, they will be protected but the efficacy of the vaccine is not that good if you see your tetanus shots which are given uh, it always has acella pertussis added to it as a periodic dose because the vaccination cover is not as good so the right answer over here is bordetella pertussis as far as the other options are concerned child abuse is out but always think about it when somebody is brought in uh chlamydia trachomatis will cause conjunctivitis and uh, it can cause uh, the staccato cough hemophilus influenza type b vaccination is available can give rise to epiglottitis neisseria meningitidis uh, will is will not give you bouts of cough followed by vomiting so and will not give you rectal prolapse bordetella pertussis because of the pressure in the chest and the abdomen uh, they get this uh, petechial rashes they can get rectal prolapse they can even get diaphragmatic rupture and hernias so if these things are there like diaphragmatic hernia on the chest x-ray uh, or uh, a hernia is visible along with bouts of cough and followed by vomiting just think of bordetella pertussis let's move on to question number 3 two week old neonate is in the ed with vomiting lethargy abdominal distension this is red there is red blood in the nappy the child looks unwell and diagnosis of necrotizing enterocolitis is made so two weeks necrotizing enterocolitis with abdominal distension and blood uh, so iv antibiotics and fluid boluses are given surgical team is consulted which of the following does not hold true with the diagnosis air in the portal vein carries poor prognosis coagulase is positive staphylococcus is often implicated polycythemia and metabolic acidosis are common findings nematosis intestinalis is pathognomonic prematurity and enteral feeding are risk factors so take a 10 second pause and then we'll discuss the answers So guys necrotizing enterocolitis is a very deadly condition it has a high mortality and morbidity so an immediate diagnosis is important if a child is newborn and in the neonatal period comes in with lethargy abdominal distension plus or minus fever blood in the nappy think of necrotizing enterocolitis give them iv antibiotics give them uh, uh, fluids boluses and get the surgical team involved immediately uh on the blood you will see polycythemia and metabolic acidosis on the x-ray you may see gas in the intestinal wall which is pathognomonic if the gas is present in the portal vein then it is carrying a poor prognosis and prematurity and enteral feeding are the common risk factors so here i have solved the question by ruling out coagulase positive staph is often implicated oh that's the only one which is the odd man out actually that is the right answer coagulase negative staph is often implicated so the right answer is this does not hold true for this diagnosis so let's look at question number 4 16 week old child is in the ed brought by frightened mother she says the child was in her lap asleep made some choking sounds stop breathing and turned blue that lasted about few seconds she has never seen anything like that the child appears alert in the ed and you have no concerning features in history and on examination a diagnosis of gru is made what would be the next step the provider must perform admit solely for monitoring obtain cbc electrolytes eeg 
obtain purchases swap 12 lead ECG provide education including CPR training recommend home monitoring system so let's take a 5 to 10 second pause and then we will discuss the answer Okay, so they have given us the diagnosis, which was uh, a bit uh, bad on their part. I thought the question is going to go, what's the diagnosis? So they have given us a diagnosis of Drew. Uh, and here the author wants us to know what is the next step the provider must perform. May perform is different. Here they are asking what should be performed. So this is Brew, formerly known as ALT. So Brew is defined as brief less than one minute resolved so all symptoms are gone there is no explanation found so unexplained event so it's sudden onset brief completely resolved with no other explanation event event means either the color has changed or their breathing pattern changed tone has changed or they became altered sensorium that, that's the gcs change and this should last less than a minute the lowest features are the child is born after 32 weeks of gestation the child is greater than two months event lasted less than one minute it's the first event so it's low risk no cpr given by trained personnel and no concerning history and physical exam this question will be there in both fr chem final and the mr chem intermediate exam so make a note that this question is highly likely to appear in your exam. So what to do if there are no concerns? There are a few things given over here. The examiner, uh, the physician should provide education, should, must provide education including CPR training. They may do a pertussis swab or a 12 lead ECG. They should not do routine blood investigations, CSF examination, EEG, etc. They should not recommend home monitoring systems. They should not prescribe anti-epileptics, PPIs or H2 blockers. They need not advise or admission solely for monitoring. So what they must do is provide education including CPR training. Let's look at the bonus question for this month 24 year old lady is reported to have palpitations for last few hours she has no comorbidities and takes no medication she has no other symptoms an ecg shows supraventricular tachycardia at the rate of 200 per minute vagal maneuvers and adenosine three doses has not helped she has stayed stable throughout what would be the next step of management Administer amiodarone, administer verapamil, apply ice on face, seek help from the cardiology team, synchronize cardioversion. I will leave this question for you to answer in the comments below. We will discuss the options and the answers in the next month video. Until then, happy studying, good luck for your exams, thank you so much. If you are liking this video, please like, subscribe, share this video and Happy studying, good luck, see you then next month.